Yeah. He's killing it. And you know what? I know the Chiefs had him in camp, right. and he didn't make that squad, which blew me Not away. Not a good sign. <laughs> I thought that if anybody can re resurrect him, it's Andy Reid. Right. So, has he lost a step? I don't know. He put up huge numbers again over the yeah. weekend. Found the end zone a couple of times. Definitely not as fast as he was because oh, I watched oh, the no. highlights. Oh no, he's I mean, not, oh, I don't. He, I doubt he could play in the NFL anymore. But I th doubt there it is too. no harm in but bringing you know him what? to camp. I'm inviting him to camp. I got a Dequell. Well, you, you want to take a flyer on him? Why not? Yeah, I'll take a shot. All you know right. why not? He still has the passion to play. He, like you said, I've been watching. Everyone's been watching. He's him. Thirty-one. How he, he, yeah, he's yeah. thirty-one. What's the what's the harm? He can push the other guys to say, you know what? If he can still do it at a high level, you know it. it how about this? The the re the the reward outweighs the risk at this point. He'll yeah, be no, right. There's no risk he, if he's if he's banned yeah. in the locker room, whatever. You cut his ass. If he can't play anymore, you cut him. I mean, you know, he's not getting any guaranteed money. No, but at least you know. Right, but I kick the tires with it. I yeah. definitely do. Yep, I, I agree with that. I, I'm fine with that as a flyer. But but Dequel, we were talking about this. We the Browns have they they jumped into the deep part of the pool with Deshaun Watson. Mm -hmm. They've got to go crazy. Yep. I think they got. They got to, not, not recklessly, but they've got to address all these needs. They can't mess around. They got to spend whatever they have to, trades, draft picks, whatever it takes to get better with some veterans. We were suggesting either Fletcher Cox or Brandon Graham, Eric Kendricks at linebacker, and then you yeah. know, we talked about Jesse Bates. What do you think about the Browns going all in? Yeah, I mean, you have to. I mean, listen, in my personal opinion, if the front office, the front office feels the sense of urgency this year to get it done because the things you just laid out, Bull, they, that was a huge investment bringing Deshaun Watson in. That was not just to get to the playoffs or just borderline, you know, fall into the playoffs. You made a move that gave me the impression, I'm sure all the guys on the team, best for receivers and more receivers, pass catchers, uh, and definitely beefing up that defense. And the guys you mentioned, Fletcher, Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, I'll take either one of those guys because guess what? Either one of those guys brings a, a, a level of professionalism, a, 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 there's a, a proven veteran mm -hmm. that God knows we need on that defensive line standpoint, that defense alone, to <clears> couple <throat> with and, and extend the message of a, a Jim Schwartz that's going to command the room as we we hope he would, but I, I kick the tires. You have to land one of these guys, and one guy, uh, another Absolutely. linebacker you guys uh, hadn't brought up was Levante David. Either Levante yeah. David and Hendricks, you have to, you have to grab one of these guys. That, in my opinion, they're one of the top free agents that are that are uh, available, as opposed to trying to find a guy in the draft right now because the sense of urgency is is prevalent. They got to win now, or by this time next year. You know, we a lot of guys, a, a lot of people will be out of uh, jobs in, in that front. Yeah. To, to make this art, you know, marginally better. Uh, Browns, according to Mary Kay, Mary Kay Cabot's uh, notes, she said there's going to be an effort to re-sign Taki Taki and Anthony Walker. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I like Anthony Walker. Uh, Taki Taki, he, he, he proved, uh, obviously, he got injured towards the end, but he played well. Those are guys that you can plug in. You know you can plug in and play if you have to go down this route of musical chairs at the linebacker position. But I think you bring Anthony Walker back. I'm not sure what his uh, contract situation is at this point, but he's a guy that you invested. Obviously, you wanted. He was a, he was good for the locker room, and when you lost him, you saw things kind of fall apart. Now, is he the sole answer? No, but he's definitely uh, a player that can that that will. That, that adds value, that adds, uh, you know, uh, depth to that room. But I definitely, either one of those guys, I think if you can get it done, you get it done. But you also have to make a splash in Levante David. Uh, uh, you know, Dequel, I I'm glad you said that. See, shout out to the big homie, Anthony Walker, man. I told him, I said, listen, man, mm -hmm. you know, he came back off injury. I said, but that can't be the only move. Anthony Walker, I like him, but we still need to upgrade right. that position. Now, I don't, I don't right. think he, I, I, he like, I called him Captain Planet. <laughs> now, didn't you call him Jag? He, well, Just yeah, the he, guy? He's a Jag, but, but then I said, he can't be <laughs> Captain Planet. You can't be saying, I'm, I'm going to wish somebody on the ground. You got to make plays, dog. So, at the right, end of the day, right. I need some more on top of that. I like Levante David. I like Kendricks. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Bobby Wagner want. I like him, too. Uh, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, they mm -hmm. need two or three. And I, and I wanted to drill down on this. See, earlier in the year, you was not too high on 
JOK. Now, mm -hmm. when you said they might need to go ahead and release this man, was that hyperbole? Mm -hmm. Or you nope. felt like... Go ahead. No, it, it's for what I watched on the field from year one to year two, there needs to be... I, I just saw just day one, linebacker 101, mistakes happening and reoccurring at a high clip. And if you were to take away the physical attributes of this young man, he wouldn't have a job. But because he has that physical prowess and you know it's in his body to get it done, I don't know what was going on, whether he couldn't see, whether he needed an eye test, whether he need I don't know what was going on. And I'm sure the linebacker coach, you know, if he had hair, he didn't have any hair towards the end of the season coaching him. But, you know, at times he would play better, but it wasn't enough for this defense uh, for him to be a, a, a fixture on. Anthony Walker, you put on the tape. When he did play, you go back to previous years, he did certain things right. And that's as simple as reading reading your triangle, we like to call it from a linebacker position, and expanding your vision. His vision, his eyes were bad. I think if he doesn't show uh, improvement, I think you have to kick the tires on. You can't you can't afford to to hold on to a, a high draft pick like this unless you can get some trade bait for him. But he's one of those guys. If he doesn't play well right away, he doesn't show flashes. I think you have to move on, and I'm gonna stick to it because he's. I, I've seen guys with lesser talent be able to play the position and be effective. Whether or not they now they weren't the you know a, a, a difference maker, but they were effective. And when you plug them in, you know they're gonna do things right. You know they're gonna make read their keys. They're gonna know what to, where to go. Well, uh, um, you know, just how to play the position. I didn't think he 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 relied too much on his raw ability, and that's something that you know, as a pro, as a guy coming from college, you think that would be corrected when you when he was in year two. I, I just saw. Safety to quell? I mean, safety requires a lot more, you know, uh, communicating, a lot more. I, I, I I was, he was on the wrong side of the formation with his body frame. I don't think that necessarily bodes well for him. I think he has to be an interior guy. He can't be on one end or the other. But I understood why they made the decision during the year because you take part of the menu off his plate when you put one guy on one side of the field. But could he play safety? He's fast enough to play the position. Yeah, I can he tell has you the that. athleticism. Mm -hmm. his, his frame for linebacker, he just doesn't. I know the Browns wanted to get more athletic at that position, particularly mm -hmm. because Lamar Jackson is in the conference and you need that kind of spy at right. linebacker that can run with these guys. But I think right. he's oh, he's too small, in my view. He's too small to be a, an a impactful linebacker. And I don't think the instincts are there. I Like, to your point, the instincts are just natural. And it just doesn't seem right. like that's that he has that piece of it. Yeah, and I try to think about, you know, he is a kid from Ghana, and, you know, football, watching football. So, from my experience with playing with guys from that didn't necessarily have football in their backyard, it takes them a little bit more time. But, you know, in the NFL, there is no time. It's, right. it's the not for long league. And if you don't get it done, you don't have a job. So, and, and playing for the Browns, that's one position where it's so – you're just looking for one guy to take it over, to take the uh, bull by the reins, and say, you know what, this is this is my this is this is my team. Uh, I'm going to be the fixture at linebacker, and, and and let's build from that. But he has a golden opportunity, and if he doesn't take advantage of it, unfortunately, he'll be moving either position or or uh, area codes here. De well, the only one taking me by the reins is my wife, so let's keep that straight, right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I know you were you were at uh, at the combine there. What's going on? Are they mm -hmm. are you are you working with the Browns? Are you doing some stuff? Because are we are you now an inside source for the Browns for us? Yeah. Or what? Well, so that, so I so that's a good question. Boy, yeah. I have to be careful what I say. Ah, yeah. <laughs> how, how I say it. We will materialize here pretty soon. Uh, as far as the conversations we've had, it'll be more sort of player development and working with players individually, nice. assessing them and, and kind of using the tools that I developed when I played the game and, and, and helped in any capacity. So right now we're just trying to figure that out. But to be at the combine, man, was was a, a very unique experience to see it from the coaches and front office standpoint. Yeah. You know, I had, you know, it was something as simple as I played in, in Indy for three years 
And guys, I've never walked around the stadium. So I showed up early, just walked around the stadium to check it out and just meeting different guys who I either played with that are now in front offices around the league. It was very, very helpful to kind of, you know, see what they thought of uh, the position, what they thought about, you know, being in the league and and, and just hearing that point of view from, uh, from a front office standpoint. But I'll tell you what, those guys, man. You know, to watch some of these guys, the, the guy from the D lineman from Northwestern run a 4 4 at 282 see a field that a guy can fast and that heavy. But um, the Browns, listen, I had a great, great visit with Stefanski. Uh, I talked to a, a, anyone that would give me the second just to, you know, just to kind of get familiar with them and they can get familiar with me. So right now, it's still in preliminary phase, and I'm sure I'll be out there once again and around OTAs and minicamp, more of a, a rigid schedule and, right. and from that moment i have a better better idea of what that role would look like if uh they would allow me to be there hey wow. dq would That's you awesome. mind uh closing out of your vmix link and logging back in you're, you're lagging for a sec so i'm gonna do a promo uh, okay. read that will kick you out and come right back in all right okay all right all so, right well the quill's doing that i'm gonna tell you what the quill ate for breakfast this morning built bars knew it looking big he brought it to indy shared him at the combine the Quell is built by Built Bar, just like we all are at the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. If you use promo code LOCKDOWN15, you get 15% off at locked at built.com. Excuse me. The promo code, the, the URL, too similar, but you still get 15% off Man. at J- LOCKDOWN. Jay, you anything I, out of that? Yeah, let me tell you this, Jay. Um, watching the, I did watch the combine. I watched a lot of it. And I, I don't know what made me think about your son, but he was just talking about the evolution of athletes. And, I, you know, this is, you know, you start looking at the curve. Guys are getting more and more wow. athletic. To Bigger, a point. faster, stronger. Yeah. These guys are, these guys are 200. When I came out, you ran a 4.8. You was moving. These guys <laughs> are yeah. running 4.4 four consistently. You, you saw with the big lineman from Ohio State. Yeah. He ran like a 5.2 or something. These are but, offensive but, tackles. But when you look at how big he is and how strong he it's is. It's amazing. 5.4. Five, five, when, so you say you run a five flat 40. Let me just explain something to you. People <laughs> always say what they would do to athletes. Do you know that the, that that a, that a regular offensive lineman is tracking down a run in the middle of person on the street? Yeah, Facts. you can't even <laughs> run away from them. No way. Oh, they, they, they don't know that. They don't know how fast these dudes <laughs> is, man. They tracking you down, bro. That's some scary <laughs> stuff. I've always said the most inc- awe inspired thing I've, I've done in all of my career of covering sports is to cover an NFL game from the sidelines. There, there is absolutely no show of athleticism on the planet that compares. I think a physical sport. I, I remember be sitting ringside for a boxing match once. Yeah, that's and I was like, oh my God, yeah, how hard, they, how hard of, they actually hit. I watched a couple of like tomato can heavyweights, like yeah. bottom of the barrel guys. <laughs> yep. And I was like, oh my God, every punch looked like a sledgehammer hitting the yeah. guy in the face. I've been at title fights, middleweight title yeah, yeah. fights, middleweights. Just, and these guys, it's what what every blow sounded like. Even a blow that at home, you're like, that didn't do any damage. Yeah. Even like a six inch body shot. Yeah. It sounds like a baseball bat to the side. It's crazy. Of, you know, a, a side of beef. It's crazy. And, it really and you're just sitting there. So that is that is really eye opening. Yeah. But to me on a football field, when, when you're watching TV doesn't even come close to giving justice no. to the mm-hmm. speed and the size. And more importantly, to I know you can answer to this. The mm-hmm. actual violence of these collisions, every oh, yeah. single collision where a ball carrier is tackled in the open field, it sounds like a car crash. Yeah, it's painful to watch nowadays. I, I, <laughs> I, I have to constantly remind myself, I did this all yeah. my life. No yeah. kidding. Like, I ran into human beings fast as I could all my life. It, it's something that I'm so mentally, I'm not in that space. But, but guys, I, I want to go back to a point I made when uh, Will asked me about the combine. I saw a drill that was taking place. And I don't know if they showed it on the live broadcast, but to me, it was a waste of damn time. They were they were uh, trying to measure uh, flexibility where a guy laid on his butt and he had to flip his legs over his head. And there was a guy to uh, move the, the feet out and in. And I'm looking, I'm like, is this an actual drill? This is what? like, what, what do we, what do we get? What information are we recording from this? Well, and it was agility important though. You sure that wasn't a porn movie tryout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? You got these 300 pound offensive line, defensive linemen putting their, 
the legs over the head, Lord, I would lose my breath trying to do that. And it was like, oh, we're, we're, we're checking their, their hips and range of motion. I'm like, yeah, get out of yeah. here. That is well, not what, though, but but I, I, the reason I think there's value in that, Dequel, and I could be wrong, I, I remember one of the things that my son used to work on more than anything else, aside from speed and strength, was mm-hmm. agility, was flexibility. Because here's right. the way he explained it. He had... He was constantly having, uh, late high school, early college, constantly having motor injuries. And by that, I mean mm-hmm. quads, uh, your, your, your flexors. My hip flexors always hurt. You know, hip flexors are the big yeah. one, particularly for long yeah. jumpers, because their range of motion in flight with their legs is, is over 180 degrees. Mm-hmm. So he learned the value in his first two years at Rutgers um, okay. in strength and agility. Because what, here's what they told him flat out. And this is why I think it's so important at these combines. They told him, if we can get you to a certain flexibility level, we can eliminate mm-hmm. the idea that you will tear hamstrings. We can eliminate the idea that you will uh, mm-hmm. pull your glutes, um, even your core muscles. Because they said, that's those injuries occur, as you know, when you've overstretched, when you've mm-hmm. overflexed. So what they do is they find your range, and if it's here, they build it to this, knowing mm-hmm. that you're never going to exceed this to get injured. And yeah, it's it, amazing it, how it worked for him. The, the, no, I'm not going to. You make a great point, but I'm not buying it. The, what, what they were doing, <laughs> not, I, I can't. He was like, I, you're he's there like a to showcase your ability to play football. We, yeah. we can do that some other time. You no, know I think I think they're trying to figure out your likelihood of mm. suffering an injury. The Quell's not buying it yet. No. I'm not buying it. I'm hey, not speak, buying speaking it. Speaking of not. drills that, because we were talking about this Friday, <laughs> Joe Thomas last week said that he thinks the bench press is not really useful. He says mm. the guys that do the bench press that has nothing to do with being an offensive lineman or, or, yeah. or uh, period. Yeah. And it's useless. Yeah, he, it's thinks like, to... he thinks like a, a deadlift would probably be more meaningful. Uh, I think he said a deadlift. I don't remember exactly. I, I, mean, what I mean, listen, before you said that last bit about yeah. a different, you know, pull or push, then yeah, right. I, the bench press, I played with a lot of guys who were, you know, bench strong but couldn't get off a block to save their life it's all about technique but i I do think there's a level of i that's that's a hard one to sell for me to get rid of because i enjoy watching it to be honest with you you know some of the dbs are the strongest pound for pound human beings on the face of this planet you know that are 200 pounds that can push you know five six hundred pounds pound for pound you know all the guys up dbs i play with they've always been just on another level in terms of uh, right. just brute strength. Don't tell Tyvis that. Yeah. Oh, the, Ty, Tyvis is the exception. He probably wasn't. He didn't fit that bill. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't barely do I'm not buying now. Did you guys Tyvis. hear about the USC lineman who had a clean tear of his ACL? Yeah. And came back after that. The next morning. The next morning. Yeah. And repped like was 38. 38 uh, the most of any offensive lineman. The most reps oh on the God. bench. By the way, that measure, that you know crazy. what that measured to me? Heart. Heart. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I want that right. Right. Here's the thing, though, Dequel, that that I think oh, you could. I think people get suckered every year. It's like mm-hmm. we I, I get it. The measurables are important. You want a guy to be fast and strong and all these things. But how many times do we see it where a guy showed you nothing on the football field for three, four years in college? And then right. he kills it at the combine, and we're like, well, this guy's moving up the draft board. Well, nothing yeah. he did on the football. If I, I'm not moving a guy up on the draft board because he mm-hmm. runs fast. There's a lot yeah. of guys who run fast that aren't good at football. Just because right. you could run really fast doesn't make you a great football Anthony player. Schwartz. I, <laughs> and John Ross, who the Bengals drafted right. in the top ten. Yeah. Right. I, 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 th- I think we get so enamored with these numbers and so excited by them. And it's not just us. The teams do it, too, and they make bad picks yeah. because of it often. I mean, you you should you should have seen. I was had a privilege to sit in a box and go visit with other, other uh, former coaches of mine. And, you know, everyone seemed to have a stopwatch. You know, anytime yeah. the 40 was up, everyone was enamored with it. And they recorded their own times and they're competing with each other. And it's amazing how close they were to the actual uh, uh, electronic, you know, deal they have at the yeah. 40. But you're right. I mean, it, it's, some, it's some for the fans. It's something to watch. It, it, it's, it's a measuring stick to see how athletic you are. But you're right. At the end of the day, do you make plays? Or are you showing up on the field or are you not? And, and it's so hard to separate the two. Listen, if you had a guy on the fringe level, if he ran, went out and ran a really great time, benched a lot and, and jumped through the roof, yeah, he may move up a, t- a touch. Yeah. But it's so hard to, to to separate the two. 
Uh, listen, I was just enamored at how many guys were so much faster than me that outweighed me by 100 pounds. There, man. It, was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was unreal, man. They are I don't faster know. and stronger. Hey, just, yeah. Yeah. In today's mm -hmm. day and age, we hear all the weird questions come out because Twitter's around, social media's around. It's a thing. When you were going through the combine process and doing interviews with teams, did you yeah. ever get asked to do something ridiculous or weird? Or what was the yeah, weird question yeah. as you were going through that process? It, it was actually, it was a running back, or no, a linebacker's coach for Cincinnati years ago. I can't remember his name, but I remember out of all the visits I've, I've had with teams during that time, he gave me his card on the way out. He was like, I expect you to call me once every week until now, until the draft. And so I called my agent. I'm like, hey, this guy wants me to call him every week until the draft. He's like, no, we're not doing that. You know, screw this guy. He's just mad. I'm like, well, listen, if I'll make the call, if it makes, if, it, if, if, if I can get drafted and play in this league, I'll do it. But it was just so strange that, you know, I would see the guy, you know, years later and, it was so awkward, man. I was like, why would you even do that? <laughs> if you had yeah, no he was testing you. Me, he was absolutely you know? testing you. Duquel, you know this as well as anybody. What what this whole offseason period is about, the draft, there's mm -hmm. there's really three things that they're, that they're measuring. They're looking at your tape. That hay is in the barn. Then right. they're going to poke, prod, and measure and right. test your ability, strength, speed, all of that. And then the other one is – Character, which under character, mm -hmm. I would also include intelligence because they're I know that, right. you know, the, the old intelligence test is out. I don't mm -hmm. think they even give that anymore. The Wonderlick you're talking about? Yeah, the Wonderlick is dead, right? I'm pretty sure that teams just pretty much stopped using it. Um, yeah. But they're still asking questions and they're testing your, your character and all of that. If you were a GM or if you were a mm -hmm. scout, a coach, whatever, what formula would you have? You've got a hundred parts to the pie. Oof. What part are you giving to play on the field? What part are you giving to performance at the combine? And what part are you giving to character, intelligence, et cetera? You know, probably the combine, the measurable and the physical ability, I would say that would be probably 20% of it, God, you know, and everything that's exactly what I would weigh it. Yeah. And everything else will kind of be, uh, uh, tied together, you know, the right. character and what you do on the field, those have to, those have to mirror each other. Yeah. Uh, but I, 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 I'd say this, man, it, it's, it's no special sauce to it. it. It's like, I always ask my myself this question. How do you, if you, how do you measure what's between someone's ears, you know, in yeah. terms of grit, you know, and I think that it goes to talking to how they treat people, you know, go to the people that they least, um, um, the, uh, they had the least amount of, uh, um, you know, encounters with and see what, what their perspective is of, of this person, just to see just how, you know, uh, good of a person they are. And I mean, it, it's such a hard equation to try to figure out and master because you can have all the due diligence in the world. And if a guy, you know, tucks his tail the minute things get hard, you know, what, what do you have here? You wasted your time. But, right. um, you know, it, it's very interesting, man. It's very, very, very interesting. And it's a tough equation to try to figure out, but that's not an easy question to answer right now. That, what is a great question. I'd but like to ask all 32 be, GMs. Of, I would know, love question. to be, have some time and be in the room, hopefully with the Browns one day and see if I can be a part of that equation and help just to understand the psyche of a player and help whoever has to make that decision down the road. It actually got me thinking about, uh, I actually told a story to some of the guys in the suite about some of the things that, you know, some of those old instincts were coming back, being in that building during that time, seeing all these guys run 40s and do all these uh, different things. I remember cheating uh, for the for the, uh, for the 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 um, vertical jump. So when I was going through the combine, I think I went like the third day. And so in my room, my agent always told me, watch the combine. I was like, why would I need to watch the combine? He was like, well, you don't know whether you're going to run a 40 first or bench press first. It's all scattered. So as I'm watching the combine, I notice, you know, when they take your measurements for the vertical, you have to extend your arms above your head. They take your measurement. And then from that, they measure the difference of you slapping a little deal, deal up top. Right. But I realized they allow guys to wear gloves. So what I thought about, I was like, you know what? I took tissue and I stuck tissue in every one of my <laughs> fingers in my gut. So, you know, cause I was doing the, the vertical jump, I think third or fourth or something like that. And so I had jumped all year long. I jumped no more than like 34 inches. 
right with the with the tissue in my glove i jumped like a 37 and a half it was amazing <laughs> amazing and hey, so i told my buddies my buddy yeah. was there my, my team i was like hey man you know use your glove and after a while they shut it off but uh, i'd already recorded my nice. 37 and a half vert and that was one of my came to fames of uh Dequil, you out there you out there with them big foam fingers. You got <laughs> hey, one finger. Yeah, the number this one is the glove yeah. I play with, so I'd like to do the vertical with this. Hey, no. I was trying to get paid, G. Yeah, that's right. I don't blame you. Hey, if hey. you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Well, <coughs> do you I can't remember because you had Warren on with us last week. I can't remember exactly the timeline if we've had you on since Ray Ventron got the job. Um, no, yeah. I, no, no, he was. it was right, he was right, he right after. Yeah. Okay, we you did. were on. You were on right after because we had Phil Dawson on uh, last week oh, yeah, for the Phil. first time, and, oh, and Phil man. was excited to talk about his relationship with you and with Ventron. Yeah. Obviously, he was going crazy. Yeah, yeah, man, I missed that episode, man. Phil is. I haven't talked to him in a while. Like I said, I have his framed jersey and yeah. his cleats. I was a big fan of Phil, man. He's and they, high I think. He's coaching high school now. Oh, yeah. that's good. That's good. He, he needs to come back to Cleveland. They need to put him on retainer, have him teach, uh, you know, our kicker how to adjust to this win. We asked and, him about Phil that. Phil said the last thing Cade York wants is an old ball guy telling him what to do. It's you know, funny. exact words. So It's funny. He taught – I feel like I learned more, and I've talked to Phil Dawson once before, but I felt mm -hmm. like I learned more in the 20 minutes we had Phil Dawson about special teams than I've learned oh. in the rest of my life combined. What a savant yeah. when it comes to that stuff. So, so Phil, so I had to put Phil, you know, um, Cribs and Bubba. So I, I had a chance to visit with Bubba. While I was at the combine, and I was like, dude, you know, because he had one of the top, you know, return return um, units in the, in the league with with Indy, and it was just like, man, I don't see guys the way Cribs would set up a kickoff return to help the front line guys block. I was like, I don't see that anywhere, and it's just like. He has a PhD in special teams and how to, you know, get your job. So he he's gonna he's gonna make a, a huge impression on on this this unit. And you should see him. The guy's in better shape than half the guys in the locker room themselves. So I it's it. easy to to uh, to for for players to for him to get the players' attention. Dequel, sure. there's no salary cap on coaches. So this is what I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And Jason Lloyd has referred to this a number of times because kicking is really. In most cases, most of your games are decided by kicks. I mean, yeah. you know, whether we like it or not, we <laughs> see a vast majority of games come down to kicks. So we know how important they are. Jason tells us that only one team has mm -hmm. a kicking specialist as a coach. So I don't mean wow. the special teams coach. They have a kicking <clears throat> specialist. Well, which team has the best kicker in the league? Yeah. It's You're Justin right. Tucker by a mile. Well, Tucker, Tucker, so, yes. So what, what I don't understand is, as long as our owner is going to be in the business of spending $875 million to become there part owner of an NBA <laughs> team a 1,000 miles yeah. away, uh -huh. why don't we drop a little bread and hire Josh Cribbs and drop a little right. bread and hire mm -hmm. Phil Dawson to help Ventrone yeah. and, and make this yeah. dedication? We aren't just going to be number one in the league on special teams. We're yeah. going to be number one by a mile, and that's yeah. a third of the game. Yeah. So Jay, I would we're going to do everything all the, all the we need, and we're going to hire Dequel Jackson to be a linebacker consultant. Yeah, I would do it at every position that obviously you have Why trust not? with former guys who who have been in the building. I, I tell you what, there's other teams doing that. There's other teams that you know, like Philly. There's no re there's no mistake. Philly was in the the Super Bowl. It wasn't. That's not a coincidence. They right. actually have things in place where. They create sort of like a college atmosphere of Brent Selleck and Darren Sproles. They hire them to come in multiple times a week just to be around the guys. And obviously, there's a there's deliverables they have to um, they have to uh, meet. But that's part of it, right? It's like what, wouldn't you want to go to a place where you know you can touch Ray Lewis and you're, he's going to be in the building? You can soak up some yes. knowledge from him. I think you have to get away from this old mentality. One guy can do it all. Well, you know right. what? One guy needs some help to coach all these guys up because right. your message may not be the message that gets across to guys. I do it all the time. Guys would, would you know, former coaches, I'm like, hey, can you talk to this guy? I can't get through to him. So, you know, that's that was the whole reason behind me reaching out to Andrew Barry and staff and say, you know what? I've been doing this since I retired. Let me see if I could, if, if this could, could work in your building. And uh, hopefully it does. And, I, and I'm excited for yeah. it. And, 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 you know, I'll let you guys know how, how it works we're out. But, for you uh, too. Yeah, but we're not coming on the show. You just can't leave. Are you still you know? going to come on the show if you're working with the Browns? 
I, I mean, we'll see. We'll oh, see. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, oh, hey, sure. hey, I like you. Listen, I like how you didn't play no games with that. Yeah. You like, if they're going to bring me in on this checkonomics game, we're going to have to take yeah, some right. of this off. Oh, man. Well, Dequel, did you get a chance to talk with Jim Schwartz this week uh, during at Carolina <coughs> Talk? I did. He was the one guy I missed. I, I had a chance to sit down with uh, Stefanski during the combine, and yeah. we just talked ball, talk ball, and kind of philosophy. And and you know, he asked me a, a question that I couldn't. And no one's ever asked me how many. He asked me how many defensive coordinators had I played for. And guys, I could not think of. <laughs> it was been so many because I think uh, I've had like eight head coaches. So you know, oh you times God. that by probably two. I mean, it's it's. And I realized I was like, you know what? In my entire 11 careers, I've only played in the system two years or more twice. And that was everything else has been every year I had to learn a new uh, defensive scheme. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm well equipped to, to be in an NFL locker room and, and be a coach and whatever else they, they, they would have in store for me. So I definitely have the credentials for it. Hey, listen, man, listen, I know you're going to be up to your ears and some of that good quality NFL official gear. Yeah, <laughs> you gonna be in here to quell. Do not be out here with no gloves on in the middle of winter. <laughs> you a regular civilian. To quell got the gloves on. He got a, he got a black spat on his flexed. shoes. <laughs> Boy, oh, I yeah, tell man. You. Listen, I, I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, Brad, um, the equipment guy. You know, that's one guy you have to keep in touch with because they got all the great gear, all of it. So yeah, I got you, G. G, yeah. you're a gear guy, so yeah. I got you, man. I, uh, you hit me up, I got you. Don't forget about us, too. <laughs> look, 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 I'm still waiting one. on my bourbon, dude. Have yeah, you sent my bourbon? <laughs> it, it's been sent. It's in the mail. I promise you. It is. Right. Did you, you send a bottle that, that I gave I did, yes. Okay, I good. did. By the way. And I found out mailing alcohol, not easy. No, it's very no. difficult. That's why Jay just gave it to me and said, hey, you figure it out. I, I had did. no idea what I was getting into. <laughs> By the way, have you Dude, guys I... noticed that Mike's voice has been jacked up for about a week? He took yeah. an elbow to the throat. I got elbowed in to the throat last, Thursday, uh, last Tuesday playing basketball. It still hurts. Come on, tell us the truth, man. What happened? What happened? <laughs> I did. I really, This guy named Nate who I, you know what? I'm at, I'm going to see him tonight. We're playing tonight, actually. So I'm not yeah. going to say. Are you going I mean, back? Some payback? No. I mean, I hit the game when I shot that game, but I'm not oh, there we go. That's, that's payback. I'm not gonna cross check him back, but that's or I hit puberty I don't at 29. That. One of the two. Mike, if I were you, I'd set the biggest pick and knock him on his ass. <laughs> I, we'll see. Is he bigger I'll come than you? With you. I'll let, I'll set the pick for you. How big is he? <laughs> He's a normal size guy. Not that big. Bigger than you. Then. But bigger than you. Right. Most people are, yeah. Like, mm. All right, Dequell, thanks for your time, brother. Enjoy right, your week. Hey, always thanks, to talk to you guys. Enjoy your week. See you, buddy. Take care. Appreciate it. So, I'm rooting for.